Hey, everyone. Don't mind the gray in my beard. You haven't prematurely aged me with all of your crazy comments and so forth and feedback on my recent videos. No, uh, I look like this because I'm at Red Team Alliance, as you can tell. We just wrapped up our Elements of Disguise class, so I was one of the subjects in the makeup room. But that's not what I'm talking to you about today. Uh, today, the topic is one of the most common covert entry tools, the Underdoor tool. Do you have one in your kit? There's a good chance you do. Do you have one on you right now? I'm sure some of you have one curled up, you know, in your backpack, ready to fly out at a moment's notice in case you got to get into a server room or a hotel room of your buddy. It's an amazing tool. It's something that we recommend to basically everyone all the time, but it could be better. This video is going to be my top three recommendations as to what you can do to improve your underdoor tool and make it way more effective. Yes, the fantastic, amazing underdoor tool. How could we improve upon something that's already such perfection and devastation? Well, up here at the top, let's start here. This head of the tool, which guides the string behind the door handle and eventually pulls down on the door handle itself, you'll often see people add something to get a little griptivity, sticktivity on this surface. Uh, I know in the U.S. we have a lot of those sweep back handles. That's called the California return. It has to do with fire cold out there, but if you're trying especially to attack European doors or if you just want to hold a door open while you're getting other elements of your entry attack and your team members already, not slipping off is important. I really do support adding something here, but tape and other things like that leave sticky residue and bullshit. This is why on the site that I don't mention, but you know, somebody's going to say it down below, I'm sure, all of our tools ship with heat shrink, right? It's not going to leave a bunch of goo. This is not marine heat shrink. It doesn't have the little hot snot inside of it. If you get a chunk of it, a lot of people email us like, why, why do we have this in here? Some people will, will get enough to wrap all the way around. I don't think you need it. What I will tend to do is kind of trim to length, and then I will send it up all the way up the handle and around, and we'll cinch it down. Let's start by doing that. Right there, looks pretty good to me. Okay, now that is much better. You're gonna grab onto the doors, pull a little harder on those handles for that moment where you need a little extra something something. What's the second best thing you can do? So the next major piece of the underdoor tool is the cord. Let's be honest, you've all been on a job or seen videos of us in trainings where, you know, it's kinking up on itself, frankly, storing it in your bag. You'll sometimes see people kind of try to wrap it up. And then what are you gonna secure it with? Like a zip tie or something? I'm sure I've, I've seen, you know, twist ties go on there. These little cable straps aren't terrible, but none of these are super ideal solutions. Yes, they're fine for stowage, but when you're actually operating in the field, Again, I, I want something that's just going to stay out of my way. It's the reason that every tool of mine comes equipped with a retracto line. Again, I think this is a great, great thing you can add on to your tool. It tightens everything up. It makes it just so nice to use, and it's an easy swap out. Let's do that. A note about working with these retracto cords. If you let this end zip all the way in, it's gone forever, or unless you crack this thing open and make a mess out of the plastic, I don't recommend that. Get yourself a set of vice grips, have them handy, and just pull a good couple of feet out of this sucker. Cinch it down there. All right, gives you the ability to work with this, make a knot in it, affix it, do what you gotta do without worrying about anything. So, we're gonna pull this little rubber booty off, and you might say, oh, all right, there's a little set screw underneath this nut thing. You don't need this nut or anything. Why make something thicker than the tool? Get it under all the doors you can. We're gonna get that off of there. Do I wanna go find my Allen key? No, I don't, because I've got plenty of line that comes with this little spool. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a chop as is. Then, what do I like to do? I'm gonna go for a nice figure eight knot on this guy. Do I think I really need that all the time? Probably not but the old mountain climber in me likes things to not be lopsided. Okay, that's looking pretty all right to me. Are we going to be able to cinch it down on here? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna pull just a hair back on my 
heat shrink in order to slip this over and fish it through. Then with my heat shrink back in place, that's unlikely to ever come slipping off there in the future. Do I need these extra ends? No, I don't. There we have it. So that, you can even feel this knot will sort of pop down in there. If you don't like that, there's nothing wrong with giving one more turn of the rope right through here so it lands like that and doesn't stop. But if you've got this affixed correctly, it's never going away. And on the job, there we are. We've got it, we have it. You drop it, you, you put it back in your bag, snap. It's all retained, it's nice and neat. It's just so beautiful. I will note for some people, when they're driving this under the door, this will apply a little more tension than you might like. So there's nothing wrong with pulling out a little extra line, giving it once around your hand, or I've even seen people make a little 3D printed insert here or just a nip in the rubber and kind of make a, like, a, like a boat anchor cleat so they can lock it off. But the moment they pop it, again, it snaps back shut, reels itself away. This is just, your luggage alone will thank you. And you'll never again have to deal with terrible kinked cords and horrible handles and everything else. Second best mod ever for the underdoor tool. All right, got ourselves a pretty great underdoor tool now, don't we? Ready to attack this and similar handles. But as a lot of you know, the problem with bypass entries isn't really getting a good grip and slipping the latch or anything else. The problem is as soon as that door starts to move, what if you have a door position sensor up there? What if you have a monitoring going on in the access control system? How do you prevent throwing an alert if you've just used another door tool in a secured space? The best way to do that, in our experience, is either get out your big mag switch, crank that down if you've identified where the door position sensor is located, or you trip the rec sensor on the egress side, letting the system be fooled into thinking that this is someone going out. By now, many of you, of course, are very familiar with the gas attack where you can spray air duster, or if you're slick, you get some tech spray, freeze spray, R134A. You blast this around through the crack in the door. Hopefully, you trip the rec sensor to seeing motion. But this is a big can. This isn't something you want to just shove in a pocket. That's, of course, why how many of you are familiar with our tiny canisters of R134A and the little nozzle head? We have these, you know, on the site that I don't mention but all of you keep asking me about because they've been saying they've been out of stock for a while. And you know, if you wanna be able to direct that gas, well, you need a little straw adapter. That's what's actually been out of stock. We've been revising and revising and revising the designs on this. And we finally have it. This <laughs> looks so simple. This is now the version three, generation three of our Rex nozzle and adapter straw. Yeah, so what could you do? Yeah, you could crush this up, have one of these in your back pocket, pull it out, blast through the door the moment that you've hit it with the underdoor tool. But why have multiple tools? Why have multiple hands? Why not just take this and adapt it further in the manner I'm about to show you? I present you with the Gen 3 of our Rex nozzle adapter. Yeah. We are going with these small holders, which believe it or not, are just the best way we found to really lock this straw in place. No leaks, drips, or gaps. Having a little washer to help you out. And then the straw itself, the straw is nylon tubing. We wanted something like a PA6 or PA12, something that would really handle a lot of abuse, including extreme temperatures. Why so much of it? Well, you can ka-chunk, ka-chunk it up. You got a meter and a half of it. You can make as many straws as you want in case you need to pull them out and replace them. Or you keep it long and do what I'm about to show you. So we've got our shrink wrap. We've got our retracto line. And now at the other end, using a couple of silicon bands, you can lash your air blaster to your underdoor tool. And then we're gonna install this line right up the handle. Now, this is a little guide. We'll have a separate video on the use of the Gen 3 attachment, but essentially, all you wanna do is give yourself a little bit of a lip on the end here. 
So just a bit of heat, eventually, even though it is high heat tolerant, this will melt down, kind of mushroom over just a hair. That's enough to give yourself a little room to put down your little grommet here. That O-ring will lock this in pretty nicely. We've got our loose end, and we'll just send it all the way around like that. So we screwed that down. We've got our blasting tube. Let's affix it to our handle now. If you can imagine, when this is pulling against the door, right, this is really flexing toward the door very hard, you might consider giving this end a little bend outward, just so it sprays a bit further away from the door. There we go. That feels proper. Let's try it out. So there we are with just about the most new and improved under door tool you could come up with. I mean, is it that new? It's not really that new. It's still an under door tool, just a few improvements. Give yourself a little more stictivity on the handle, police up that line, get it out of your way, and if you're really, really based, go ahead and do some action with the Rex gas if you're attacking very secure facilities. Keep it in your bag, keep it at the ready to go. Whoever you are, however you work on the job, whatever you do, go ahead and stay safe out there. So that's about the size of it with our new and improved under door tool. I mean, it's not really that new, right? The K22 has been around forever, but giving yourself a little griptivity, a retractable line, and if you're really feeling fun, some, uh, some Rex gas action, that can up your game. You might have noticed, by the way, again, we'll do some more videos on this in the field, I changed the mounting. So I realized as you go under the door, you want this away from the door to give yourself as much clearance as possible, and you're holding it like this anyway. So go ahead and keep your thumb right on her. Gas that rec sensor. I had a lot of fun playing with this. A ton of credit, by the way, goes to other people. I've been working with a lot of 3D printed parts, et cetera, to try to get that Gen 3 nozzle adapter. And the idea of putting it on an under door tool wasn't even mine, right? I had attached it to a long rod. We've talked about this, how if you want to reach through a server cage door, you're reaching way down a hallway, yeah, you can get long straw on your gas can. Bobic looked at what I knocked up. He was like, that's pretty great. You got that flat rod stock. You gonna put that on under door tool? I was like, I mean, yes. So I was, yeah, I'm shocked at how talented all the people are that I work with. I'm shocked at all the cool feedback and ideas that I get from everyone else in the community. This is totally a community effort. If you wanna learn more about it, if you wanna play with it, yes, we're gonna have the Gen 3 out now, maybe on the site I don't talk about. Uh, yeah, play with it, see what you come up with. Let me know how you like it. Let me know if it works for you. I'm gonna be doing a lot more testing in the field. We have a ton of rec sensors here at RTA. I plan on mounting them over all kinds of doors in all situations, but in the meantime, I can barely contain my excitement. So I hope you like this as much as I do. I hope you have fun trying it out, and I hope, as always, that you stay safe out there.